Thank you, Edward. Going back to his earliest days, no less than the august publication, the LA Times, described his performance in An Officer and a Gentleman as poignant and beautifully drawn. On his latest role in arbitrage, we said, quote, he should play the bad guy more often. And he makes the study of man mesmerizing. And the gear has quite possibly never been better. So at this time, Mr. Richard Gear, I'm thrilled to present you with the Hollywood Career Achievement Award uh, and all of us, Kathy Thompson, Devon Maharaj, and all of us at the LA Times know that you're all really only just warming up and like us, we're here to stay. kind of embarrassing uh, hearing all that stuff. Edward, I got to talk about Edward a little bit too, because when he came out to do that audition, I was actually leaving the production because we didn't have an actor who could play that part. And we couldn't find anyone in all of New York or Hollywood that was known, unknown, who could play believable as innocent. Actors can be crazy, but to be innocent is really difficult. And I was on my way out, and we got a call from, from Deborah, Deborah Aquila. And she said, wait, 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 I found this, this guy. He just had walked in an open audition. And as he said, he came out to, to do a, uh, a full screen test. With, I mean, a full screen test. I mean, there were several scenes and full out, all the, the makeup and, uh, and, and angles. We did the whole thing. It was so amazing. We looked at it and said, it must be some kind of a fluke. We better do it again. And we did it again. It was about two days later. It was equally good, and we said, this guy's a genius. And uh, so I feel very proud that I was in the beginning of your extraordinary career, my friend. Um, it's funny, you know, they, I started getting these, these kind of Lifetime Achievement Awards a few years ago, and it, it's to see, I'm not, I, I'm not aware of time very much. You should ask my wife about that. I don't know, I don't understand time very well. But when you see all the work one does, you said, well, you've been around a while. I don't think I'm old enough to get these kind of awards yet. At least I hope I'm not. Um, but I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I want to thank Carlos the Jackal yet again for, um, for this award. And um, uh, All the actors here know this careers are not made by one person. I mean, I was trying to count in, in an award ceremony in Rome last year, I was trying to count the number of people that I've worked with on movies. So there's maybe three or 400 people on a movie. I've done maybe 50 movies. So what is that? A couple hundred thousand people? Someone can tell me. That's a lot of people that was involved in you know, these clips and things that you see here. And the awards don't belong to one person. Nobody does this on their own. In life, nobody does anything on their own. So whatever these awards are, they go to everyone I've ever worked with. But there's one person that probably deserves this more than anyone else. And there was, a, there was an award that I was given in New York at the, um, oh, what's it called? The uh, Museum of the Moving Image about uh, six or seven years ago, I think it was. And I, I, I mentioned this person then, and he was there. And I've kicked myself ever since that I didn't speak more about him. And it's my dear friend and agent, Ed Lomato. I, and this is late, but I'm gonna tell the story anyhow, if you don't mind. Uh, I was, I'd worked in repertory theaters for a couple of years, and I came to the city. Long story short, a, a, I knew um, an agent there because she was married to a director that I'd worked with in regional theater. And uh, she said, look, if you ever come to New York, uh, let me look after you. And, and so I came to New York, and uh, she, I got there, and she said, well, look, I'm leaving now. Um, because uh, she was handling Zeffirelli. Zeffirelli wanted her to move to London. She said, but my assistant, is becoming an agent. 
and uh, I'd love you to meet him and see if that works out. Well, I, I remember very clearly walking into his office, and my hair was down to here, a motorcycle jacket, and uh, a huge chip on my shoulder, and I walked into uh, Ed Lamato's office, and he became my dear friend and agent for over 40 years from that moment. And the only movie that you saw up here, clip, obviously that were, that were not up there, there was not a decision I made without talking to him as a friend and as, uh, you know, the, the, the way it, the relationship should be of really dear friends. There was no manipulation. There was no silliness involved. I remember the number of times that he cried with me over making a decision of whether I should do something or not. Um, Ed died about two years ago, and um, he was a chain smoker, he like three or four packs a day. It was the, the coffee, the cigarettes, and the, and, and the telephone. And I, he, he came from Mount Vernon, New York, and I never visited his hometown, but he was clear, he talked about Mount Vernon a lot. And w w we all kind of converged on Mount Vernon to the funeral, and as we were driving around finding the, the funeral home, all the mailboxes said Lamato on them. And it was a second generation Italian. They were Neapolitans, but they had taken over this whole section of, of Mount Vernon. And we went to the funeral. The first four rows was the Sopranos. Big black hair, everyone was heaving with emotion, big sunglasses. And then there was a, 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 an aisle. And then the next four rows was all agents and lawyers from Los Angeles in Prada. <laughs> and that's what his life was, was this combination of the Sopranos and Prada. Um, if, if I've had a career of mostly good choices, some really lousy choices along the way, and lousy films, but mostly really good films, and things that I'm deeply proud of, it, it's really because of this friendship and trust that I've had with this Really wonderful man, Ed Lamato. So it's for you, Eddie.